Hey guys, welcome back. Pay no attention to the background. Uh, remember, you can't bribe rattle Pokemon. I'm here to tell you that I rewatched all the Jacob and Jamil footage. Yeah, I did. It was painful, yeah, as you can imagine. And in this video, we're going to take a look at things that I missed, especially now that uh, we know more than we did when we first watched those videos, or at least when I first watched those videos. I guess to address a few things, no, Logan did not lose money. Uh, I know at the start of the video, he let on that he lost a bunch of money. The title is a little bit on the clickbaity side, but uh, even as mentioned in his video, Shine was going to and did pay him back in full. Uh, Shine not being so lucky where the uh, $150 million young man, Jacob, is refusing to pay him back. Whether or not that's because he doesn't have the money anymore, who knows? I would say that's probably the case, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, Jacob, at the same time, now is uh, blaming the Pokaju and BBCE for his troubles. Uh, it's their fault now. They were buddy-buddy before. All was swell when the case was sealed. Again, we're going to be waiting on legal and law enforcement, so we got to be patient. We're slow and steady at this point. I will be updating, as promised. We're going to see this through to the end. Uh, it just might take a very long time to do so. Uh, I think the weirdest part now is the fact that Jacob and Jamil aren't actively, or at least it doesn't seem like they're act actively seeking out Justin. Um, if Justin ripped them off, like they claim... Shouldn't they be looking to find him and not blaming BBCE and the Pokaju? Um, shouldn't they ask for my help with that? At the same time, if any of the J-Boys, yes, that's their new name, the J-Boys, would like my help and or to share their full side of the story, please reach out. We can even make a video um, talking about you, Jacob, Jamil, and Jew, Pokaju. All the J's, talk to me. Let's... Uh, Let's have a conversation. So, another thing we should address. Logan did ask me multiple times to send me Prime. I didn't want to give my address because I assumed he wanted to send more than just Prime. Um, I, as I told him, I didn't want a reward or anything of the sort for my, my work and discovery. Um, and eventually, yes, I gave in to him uh, after making him promise that he would only send Prime. And uh, I guess we should try it out. It's so good. It's so, it's, del it's really delicious. But, you know, um, I have been and uh, will continue to give it to people who have helped me with the channel. I think it's only fair. It's a nice little gesture I guess that I can pass along all right <laughs> let's get into the video <laughs> all right to get us started I'm going to need a little bit of help I'm going to need you to comment below and vote on the biggest crime committed by Jacob was it a dipping his steak in ketchup Eat our steak. <laughs> There you go. Enjoy your steak, brother. Bone and ribeye is a celebratory steak. <laughs> Bone and ribeye is the million. Or was it B, sniffing the case in order to check its authenticity? All right, so the markings, all the markings are the same here. The boys were kind enough to record clocks in the process of making their little documentary. I'm surprised they haven't taken the whole thing down at this point. So, we can uh, pretty much tell how much time they spent at BBCE, which is pretty fun. At 3.47, they were almost there. 3.49 estimated arrival as well on the screen. At 4.13, they are masking up to go in. Then we're inside, and we see 3.55 on the BBCE clock. I don't know if Steve is trying to trick the employees into staying a few minutes late. Fix it. 5 o'clock, getting in the car to leave, and finally, at 5.25, they are talking to Shine on the phone. God bless LTE, and 
<laughs> keeping that time nice and accurate on the dashboard. So, Rattle, what does that tell us? Tells us they were probably only there for like 45 minutes. Um, how much of that time was spent filming, talking to Steve, checking out his Home Depot boxes, everything else in the store, the sports guys, so they probably talked about some of that crap too. Um, so like uh, probably less than 30 minutes to authenticate a $3.5 million box. I guess it would have only been 2.7 at that point when they were immediately flipping it. Um, I don't know. I, I can't feel sorry for any of them, really. They kind of got themselves into this. Even more so if they knew that it was fake at any point. Um, BBCE, no, they're not strictly to blame for the entire thing. But they are to blame. They're, they are part of it. Um, they were paid in cash. Probably a lot or maybe some extra if they stayed an hour late on a Sunday. Uh, clearly has no idea on Pokemon and refused to authenticate even a single box. But now he authenticates cases. Um, or did authenticate cases. They seem to be teaching Steve about it, which is should be concerning in itself that they even recorded that. Really weird. Really weird all around. I mean, none of them know what they're talking about. And I think that became very clear. So, there are a few more questions that were sort of raised when I rewatched this stuff. I really don't understand. There's no explanation for it. Why didn't they ship straight to and meet at BBCE? They, they had it shipped to Indie Card Exchange, and then they were struggling the whole time about how they were going to, you know, make the trip the same day to BBCE, if FedEx was going to get there on time or anything like that. Why well, They had to stay in a hotel anyway. Neither of them are from there. So it's it's weird that they didn't just stay somewhere closer or have it shipped to BBCE. Maybe they didn't want it to arrive without them being there. It doesn't really make sense. So they sent it to an, another Jacob, so another J name, uh, Jake or Jacob Patrick, the general manager at Indie Card Exchange, which is a 2.5 hour drive away. For what? I have no idea. Um, just so they could go in a back room with a measuring tape and scale. Oh, and, and I guess Jacob needed to sniff it back there. I don't, it doesn't make any sense. Maybe there's some hidden reason for it. Maybe it's nothing. Maybe they're just dumb. Maybe we'll never know. Another great question that came up was why Jacob and Jamil seem to never mention that the Pokeju found the case or found the lead, uh, at least until Jacob was on that like tea bagger podcast. The Pokes Jew is the one who moved this case. We moved it together. You're like Poke Jew is like my brother. Yeah, yeah, you guys. I do close. a lot, a lot of business with Poke Jew. Me and Poke Jew are are extremely, extremely close friends. So we're gonna thank you so much for your help on this. Yeah, yeah. All right. Be part of it. Uh, stay in contact with me. Let me know what's going on. I will. On. I love All you, right. Mike. I'll talk to you later. Love Bye. you too, brother. I'll see you guys soon. See you. Michael, what's up, man? Yo. Thank you for <laughs> all. Yeah, thank you for being part of this. It's awesome. Yeah, I mean, crazy, crazy how it all happened. You know, I, I didn't think that it would be this smooth, smooth and this yeah. amazing of well, a He's a good guy and we're happy we can help his family, you know? You're part of this right, history, we'll talk, man. Uh, thank you, brother. We'll, thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. My pleasure. Uh, we'll talk later tonight. For sure. So this is sort of odd. Jacob and Jamil are clearly fighting at this point due to the fact that you know Jacob doesn't want to mention his name in the podcast. I still think that has to do with the, the case being fake or maybe it has something to do with it going to Logan at this point. Mealy Pops is angry. Maybe he found out later it was fake. And uh, so now Jacob is leaning back in onto the Pokeju more than more than ever. I don't know why in the you know multiple appearances he made in the documentary thing that is never mentioned directly that he's the one that found the lead. It's really weird, really, really weird and doesn't add up. And then um, one of my best friends calls me up one day, uh, Pokeju. You know, he's Michael's one of my closest friends. 
I Legend. consider him like a brother. Legend. Um, he hits me up one day and he's like, Jacob, I, I think I have something, but I'm not really sure. And I was like, talk to me, man. He's like, I Here think I found a sealed case of first edition boxes. When you hear something like that, you're like, dude, the guy's probably trying to scam us. There's no way. And, um, you know, we worked on it for months. You know, Pokeju had the most to do with the whole situation. You know, he connected me with the person who I bought it from, you know, which, um, which the gratitude I have for him to choose me out of anyone to be the one to to buy the case was amazing. Since I had to sit through it, I think it's only fair that we take a look back at how the sealed sealed case and wrap, BBCE wrap, were pushed the entire time. The, the case already has value because it's sealed. 100, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, you know, even though there's no case hits, the premium still comes from it having a, uh, the, you know, being sealed. Yeah. Case. But what's the, what's the whole Pokemon thing that people respect that? The sealed case of oh, Pokemon? Of course, like of course, case. 100%. The sealed case of first edition channel is booster boxes. Tomorrow, that's the plan. We want to get wrapped. The case is extremely rare. This is the rarest Pokemon item. I mean, there's, there's, it's not an Illustrator PSA 10. It's not a BGS 10 Black Label Charizard. I mean, it's, it's above all that stuff. And if it gets wrapped, being the first wrapped BBCE Pokemon case that they've ever certified. I truthfully, truthfully think that this box within five years could be worth $6 million. The box is always gonna be worth more than the card. And the hype on having a sealed case is the cream of the cream of the crop when cream it comes cream. to Pokemon. Hey Matt, like, that's why there's so much sellability in this case, because of the nostalgic value to a generation of people who eat this stuff up. And it's the Ark of the Covenant. It's that kind of thing where nobody else has it, you can't touch it, you can't find it. I'll tell you something, brother. This case right here, is the case of cases. I think for both Jacob and I, we're never gonna get a chance to sell a case again in our life. You are probably not wrong there. The shrink wrap might be the, the only one in the world. Extremely valuable case, right? It's just, it is what it is, one-on-one, -on -one, record-breaking, one of the first of its kind. It's never been public, Jacob brought that up to my attention, never been publicly ever seen. You know, a case really in the last decade, because people opened them all. There's, there's so much hype behind this thing. Yeah. Wow. It, there's no such thing as cases. I do this over the phone many times. I was like, you have no idea because you, you love sports. But this right here is one of the, I think, one of the top collectibles in the world today. Absolutely. This I box right here, sealed, of course. Sure, yeah. I mean, I don't, we don't, we know that there's no sealed case of this that exists. Right? We don't know of We anything. do know that, right? Yeah. Um, because he didn't, he's never sealed one. Don't, no. Oh, never, sealed, no, this is the only one, like one million BBC percent, rat. yeah. yeah. guys that you know they value it but some newer guys into the market yeah. that just entered they don't really understand what this the, is what this is the yeah. value of having it yeah. bbc wrapped yeah. you don't have to worry about like when they sell a loose box right now they got to cut it they got to right. weigh the yeah, packs right. you don't have to go through all that yeah. you don't have to go through that song and dance yeah. with this this but is when he saw this, you know these are all legit he was, and matt and not only that not only is this the first case that they that they wrapped this is the first pokemon item ever wrapped ever in the oh, history right. of the world, because yeah. he doesn't. Pokemon was to, never wrapped. We had to make it. We had to make it. We had to, I said, "Look, Steve, listen. <laughs> I don't think you realize what I'm telling you. I'm gonna. If I get this and we can handle this and we can get it across the border and not get slit open, we got it. We finally got it, and then we verified. We did all our things, and then we drove to we drove to Indiana. And I said, Steve, you got to keep it open, man. I said, we're on our way. I'm not coming back. I said, so he stayed. He made a concession for us to stay late, and get it all done. This until someone shows they have another one. Right. It's this the only this one. is the only one. That's right. what I said too. You know, if you if you can say you have one, Pony up. all yeah. you want. Yeah. Let me see it. Yeah. Let right. me know it's real, That's and and, and don't get an empty box and, and tape it up. Yeah. Can't wait to see it. It's almost like a shame. Like if there was some kind of big time opening with this, it would be almost sad to see this thing get open. So, have fun with that, Sean. You know that's a dope. That's a dope case. All right. I think you guys get the point, Jacob. Tell us something funny. Tell us tell us a joke. Look, I'm a true I'm a true Pokemon collector.
Little did Jamil know that Jacob would be running even faster in the future from the fake case, law enforcement, the legal system, paying back shine. I've never seen Jacob move so fast. He ran a 4240 just now. <laughs> be careful. If you ever hear the wild cry of the hype dog, it sounds something like let's go or let's fucking go. And they'll say it over and over again. Uh, they'll draw it out. They'll say it to each other. Uh, it's just a sign that they're looking to mate. They want to diddle each other. Stay far, far away. Whatever you do. Let's go! <laughs> I know, that's what my mom would be yelling, let's go. I love let's, go! let's go! Let's go! Thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in. Again, these are going to be a little bit slow rolling. And now that uh, everything's tied up with the legal system and law enforcement, uh, now that the case has been opened, there's a lot of hiding going on. So it's going to be a little bit more difficult, but don't worry, we'll get to the bottom of it. I uh, probably have enough for a video next week, so look forward to that. Should be able to piece something together, get some nice little funny moments, maybe discover some new things, maybe uncover some really cool stuff. I don't know. Tune in for that next week, probably, hopefully, if I do it. But anyway, join the Discord if you haven't. See you guys next time. Remember, don't feed the hype dogs. Yeah, my partner, this, his name is Jacob, and he's probably number two to the guy in the world when it comes to Pokemon stuff. So if you need any information, we can give you all of that. So. All right, so the markings, all the markings are the same here.